In this video, we're going to talk about adding draft to your models in Fusion. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So there might be times in your design where you need to add draft, especially if you're designing like, for example, plastic injection molded parts, where you need to pull that part out of a mold. Um, or even, for example, like you're doing like 3D printed cookie cutters or something like that, where you need to have a slight taper or slight angle to your design. And this is where the draft command comes into play. Now, some people get a little bit confused with this pull direction. They don't know what that means. And the best way I can kind of describe this is it's basically the face that the other faces are going to hinge around. So you'll notice it says pull direction. I clicked on this top face and now it's asking to select the faces to draft. So I'm just going to select this front face right here and I'm just going to start to rotate this angle right here. And you can see that this vertical face is hinging along the face that was the pull direction face. So it's almost like we screwed a hinge to that top face or that pull direction face and that other face is hinging along that edge. In fact, if I were to add this other face into my selection, you can see now both of those faces are hinging along this top face's edges. Also, you'll notice that that top pull direction face is not changing size at all, whereas the bottom face is getting larger or smaller depending on the draft angle. So your pull direction face is going to stay the same size. So for example, if I were to clear my pull direction, select the bottom face as my pull direction, you'll notice it's going to stay the same size and now these walls are hinging along that bottom face and the top face is getting larger or smaller depending on my draft angle. So that's how you can kind of remember what the pull direction is meaning. It's the face that the other faces are going to hinge around. The um, flip pull direction basically allows you to, um, you know, say what the angle is either a positive or a negative. So you can kind of see right now it's a positive 10 degrees. If I click on flip, it's a negative 10 degrees. So I'll go ahead and put that back to the positive. Um, and some of these other commands will make more sense once we get into this other option, which is this parting line option. In fact, I'll go ahead and show that now. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this command. And I'm going to just create a quick offset plane. And let's just come down maybe um, half an inch in this case. I'll run the draft command again. And this time I'm going to click on the party line option. And it looks pretty similar. What's the pull direction? I'll select that top face. But this time it's asking for a parting tool. I'll go ahead and select that plane as my parting tool and I'll select this this face again. Now you'll notice this time when I rotate it's basically slicing through our design using this parting tool and I can specify my angle so let's go ahead and do like 10 degrees for example right there. And then I have these options down here. I have a fixed parting line or I can move the parting line. I'm going to go ahead and leave it fixed. And then the draft sides, I have one side or two sides. And so now you can see we can have two different angles. So I could do, you know, 10 degrees at the top and 15 degrees at the bottom, or I could do symmetric. And so it's going to be 10 degrees for the both top and the bottom or whatever angle I set that to, like 15 for example. I could come in and even select multiple faces. I could walk all the way around. And just like that, we've created the shape where we've added draft to our design through a parting line. In this case, it was a parting plane. 
So let's take that to the next level. I'm going to undo back and I can actually create a sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch on this front face. And let's do, for example, like a spline, like so. I'll finish my sketch and let's do a draft again. We'll do a parting line, same thing, pull direction. What's the parting tool? I'll select that spline as my parting tool and then I'll select this face and check this out. As I start to rotate, you can kind of see how it's using that spline as our parting tool. And I could do one side just like before, or I could come in here and say two sides and have two different angles if I wanted to. So let's do like 20 and 10 in this case, or I could make it symmetric if I wanted it to be symmetric. I'll select the other sides. We'll just do all four sides in this case. Say OK. And we now have a shape that looks like this, where it has draft all the way around using that sketch as the parting line. So for example, look at your mouse, you know, that you use for your computer. It has like, for example, like a curved parting line to separate the top and the bottom of the mouse. And that's how they do that using, for example, the spline that I showed here. And what's kind of cool is this is a parametric, right? I could come in and make a change to my spline and my my design is going to update accordingly. My draft is going to update accordingly. Okay, so now we know how to use the uh, draft command. I wanted to show another um, cool tool um, to add draft and to verify draft. So here's a more complicated design. Uh, I want to make sure that you know if I were to put this into a mold, I'd be able to pull it out, for example, an injection mold. Um, but I don't know if this has draft on it or not. So under the inspect menu, we have this draft analysis tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's asking for the body. I'll click on the body. And then it's asking for a draft direction. So I could either select, for example, a face like this or this, for example, or I could even pick for example, this green line from the uh, origin, which I'll go ahead and do because I know that's straight up and down. So I'll select that and we can see how it colorized my design. And what this is basically saying is, is it within negative two and positive two degrees of draft? And I could change this, you know, I could be, you know, between zero degrees and two degrees of draft. And so we can kind of see how it's blue and green. So what's what's interesting is I can see like there's some green right here. So all of this stuff here um, is within the two degrees. So if, in fact, if I were to say, okay, and let's turn this off, we can actually kind of look at that and see, sure enough, there's, there's a little bit of draft on these faces right here, but these faces that are blue must be straight up and down. They, they're, there's no draft whatsoever on those. So they're, they're not meeting our requirements. So we need to add some draft to that. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come in here. Let me turn this off for now. I'll come in here and add some draft. We'll, we'll do the fixed plane draft. And you'll notice in this region here, we kind of have two different um, features. We have these taller walls and then we have these shorter walls. So I'm going to work on the taller walls first. So my pull direction, I'm going to select this top face as my pull direction. And then for these faces, I'm going to select this face right here. And you'll notice it's kind of highlighting a bunch of faces. And that's because of this tangent chain option. So as I hover over this face, it's saying, is there another face tangent to it? Yes, there is, this one. Is there another face tangent? Yep. And it keeps going along until there's no more faces tangent, which is, it ends right there. So if I were to select that face, you can see it remembered my last angle, which was 20 degrees. 
So it selected all of those faces and it's going to taper all of them at the same time. So I could come in here and let's just make these two degrees and you can see the preview. In fact, if I hold down my control key, it goes from zero degrees. And if I let go, there's the two degrees. So we can kind of see what that looks like. And we can see, sure enough, it's hinging along this pull direction top face. That's where all the hinges are. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. So we've just added draft. In fact, if I turn on my analysis, we can see that those faces have now turned green. They, they're within our requirements. I'll turn that back off again. Let's go ahead and add draft to these shorter walls. Now, if I were to pick the pull direction up here and then select this face, notice what happens when I do the preview. So I'm gonna hold down my control key and watch what happens right here. So you can see how this rib is getting basically wider. So here's the original with no draft, and then here's added two degrees of draft. So you can see that that rib is getting wider, and it's basically because it's hinging way up here. And so it's having to add quite a bit of material because it's hinging from the top. So let's go ahead and clear the pull direction and say that the pull direction face is here, and now notice the result when I do my control key. So here's zero degrees of draft, here's two degrees of draft. This makes way more sense, right? So it's not having to grow this rib to add the draft. So again, be, be cautious of what your pull direction face is. It makes more sense to have it down here for these ribs than to have it way up here for these ribs. I'm hoping that makes sense. Also, if I were to set my pull direction down here, it's going to hinge down here and you'll notice that the rib is getting narrower at the top and maybe that's not what I want. I want the rib to be thick at the top and I don't want it to be losing thickness. So we obviously want the pull direction to be at the top and have the rib get a little bit thicker at the bottom to get those two degrees of draft. So again, just keep that in mind as you're adding draft, making sure you pick the correct um, pull direction. So I'll go ahead and add in um, the, these faces that I want. So I want that face and that face there. I'll just select these faces really quick. So I'll go ahead and say OK. I'll turn on my draft analysis. We can see that all of those faces are green. But as I rotate around, I can see that these faces are still blue. So I forgot to add those faces in to my draft. So let's go ahead and edit this real quick. I'll say Edit Feature. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use my Control key and click on that face. But when I do that, you'll notice I get an error message. Could not taper the surface as requested. Well, the reason for that is actually right here, this tangent chain. Because it's turned on and I selected this face and tangent chain is turned on, it's trying to select this face, which is tangent, and it's also trying to select this face, which is tangent, and that makes no sense because that's flat compared to that. And that's probably what's causing the error. So I'm gonna unselect that face. I'm gonna turn off tangent chain and let's go ahead and select that face now. And sure enough, we can see that worked. And, and that's what the issue was. It was that tangent chain. So I'll select that face. That looks good. I'll say OK. It'll update. And sure enough, all of those faces now are green. So we know that we've added the required draft that we needed to um, to make that work. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and share this video with others. And as always, have fun learning Fusion. See you next time.